guys welcome back to another video today i'm going to do a fall inspired reading vlog so this will probably you know take place over the course of weeks i don't know when it will be uploaded but yeah i'm really excited i love fall it is such a beautiful season to me um yeah but i am gonna get started so actually right now i'm kind of gonna be like doing my quiet time Today I'm going to be doing something a little different, which is focusing on memorizing scripture. So I have this little binder here, and um, yeah, I just like, oops, <laughs> falling apart a little bit. But I just um, basically wrote down, I, I'm trying to memorize a specific book of the Bible, so I've written down the entire chapter, and then I'm just going to kind of like read it, try to memorize it, write it down. So that's what I'm going to be doing in my quiet time. Um, and then I'm also going to include this reading. It's so good. It's called Even Better Than Eden. And yeah, I am on chapter three right now. This is how far I am in the book. It has been really, really good. It really has just reminded me of the hope that I have in Christ. It's reminded me of heaven and like everything that I have to look forward to as a Christian. So I really appreciate it. Um, it is written beautifully. Like this is, if, if you're wanting to read like nonfiction and I guess specifically Christian nonfiction, I'm not going to say that I have a bunch of experience with it because I have like just started really getting into reading, but this is one of those Christian nonfiction books that are actually like very conversational and draw you in. This has been such a good read for me because even when I take breaks from reading this, when I come back, I can always jump right in. Like I, I don't feel, for the most part, I really don't feel like oh, this is kind of slow, or like, you know, I want to rush through it. It's just really, really, really good, like, biblical truths to stand on. And it's basically just presenting the gospel, but it's, it's from a really unique perspective. Like, it starts, like, in the Garden of Eden. It talks about how we, like, kind of long to return back to the Garden of Eden, but actually what God has in store for us is something even better than Eden. And he had that same thing in store for Adam and Eve. So yeah, it's just really good. But I wanted to read something from here. Um, it's a little lengthy, so bear with me. But like, it's really good. So, okay, this is what it says. And it's on page 58. But it says, you think your life is defined by the body you see when you look in the mirror and the job you have or don't have or by the titles after your name, but they don't. Who you are is most profoundly about who Christ is and who the Spirit is making you to be. Your sense of identity is being shaped by your sense of being made in his image. But more than that, it is being shaped by your anticipation of being remade into his glorious image. On the days when you are doing the lowliest of tasks, on the days when you feel invisible and insignificant, on the days when you compare yourself to everyone around you who seems to be doing far more significant things with their lives, take stock of who you really are because you are united to Christ, the King. When you know that you are seated with him in heavenly places, you will be able to lower yourself to do the most menial tasks and go to the most needful of places to give yourself away. When you know that the righteousness of Christ defines you now and into eternity, shame over your sin won't have the power to shape how you see yourself. Is that not good or what? Like, yeah, so I have just like really enjoyed this. So anyway, I will be reading this after I um, work on some scripture memorization. Okay, so I'm taking a little 
school break and I am going to continue reading this. I did want to show you guys, so I got my glasses that I have been needing for all the time that I'm spending looking at a computer screen. I feel like they're really helping when I'm, you know, having to do schoolwork online and all that. But they are so dark, so this is what they look like. It's, it's cute, like the design is cute, but these glasses are so dark, so when I put them on, it looks like this. It looks like sunglasses, you know? Um, but they're not sunglasses, so yeah, it, it's a lot. I will probably need another pair that doesn't have this, or that's like less tinted. So I really only use it when I'm doing like my schoolwork, or sometimes I will use it like if I'm watching videos on my phone, but yeah, if it's nighttime and I'm doing homework and I'm, I'm looking at a screen, right, but I'm also like taking notes, it's hard to even see like the paper or the pages in my composition notebook so they are really really dark but i just wanted to show you guys that now i'm going to get into this i didn't end up reading this in the morning um so yeah i'm gonna read it now up some lectures for one of my classes. I'm really happy about that. It's actually my last week of that class so I have finals coming up. Anyway, the glasses were helpful but I still have a headache right now so I cannot really read any more of this at least until the headache passes but I'm listening to another book on audio. This book is not on my September slash October TBR but it is a very like cozy fall kind of read in my opinion. When I think of like fall reads, I think of things that are really kind of like comforting and have like just really not not peaceful, but they, they just have like a cozy kind of feel to them. And so I am continuing on with the Elm Creek quilt series. You may have heard me talk about this in other videos. I actually wanted to start from the beginning and like read all of the books in order. So I did end up um, reading the first book, which is called The Quilter's Apprentice. I have read that um, for one of, one of those months. I'm sure I talked about it on a video already. Now I'm reading The Winding Ways Quilt. Um, it's the 12th book of the series, so it's kind of hard to like fully describe it because it's built off of, you know, like a storyline that's been going on for a long time. And so... Yeah, um, it's basically about, I don't know how to, I'm not sure how to explain it without spoiling all of the other books, um, but it's basically about this group of friends who all work together. They, um, they work together for this, like, in this quilt camp, I should say. So um, all of them are like, you know, teachers or um, working on the like financial side of it. Obviously, there's somebody who owns it. And so it's just kind of basically talking about like each character's life. So it moves from one character to another. And some of the characters are leaving that job and moving on to other things. So you kind of get that. And um, yeah, hopefully that <laughs> explained it okay. It's pretty good. Um, it's, it's leaning on like a four star read for me. I think most of the books I read in this series are four star reads. And there's been a couple of times where I'm like, that is like five stars. I think one of the things that's interesting is because I read the Cross Country Quilters first, um, I really like those characters. But those characters are not really the main characters that you're going to see throughout all of the books. So I feel like the characters that are, um, I feel like the main characters, it's not that I don't care about like their storyline or anything. I actually think that all of the storylines are really interesting and great, but I don't feel as connected to these characters. And so 
it's more so like, oh, wow, this is a really interesting story, you know, but I don't feel like personally connected to any of the characters. And so I really, really want the characters from the cross country cultures to come back and make like more of an appearance. I want to see Grace Daniels again. I'm probably going on a tangent if you haven't read this series, but Grace Daniels is one of my favorite characters. Um, also Meg, I think is her name. Like that whole friend group in the cross country quilters, I just loved so much. And so, yeah, I still, I still like the story and everything. It's just, yeah, I'm not as, not feeling it as much. But anyway, let me just get started. I'm just going to close my eyes, I think, <laughs> and listen to this book. share some updates so even better than even I am on chapter oh I'm on chapter four not five yeah I'm on chapter four right now um it's called the story of clothing really good I've been underlining and yeah it's just it's just a really good book I already said that I'm sure but it really when I read it it's like I want to read the bible like it really helps me want to draw closer to God and also it's just like a really good reminder of our identity in Christ so yeah it's good for that yeah I was gonna say I have like the same <clears throat> feeling the the feeling that I get reading even better than Eden is like a similar feeling to when I read Heaven Your Real Home by um Johnny Erickson Tata yeah it's just like I just really love the descriptions in both of these books, but it's just good. <laughs> I hope that's a good enough um, review. Anyway, so yeah, I've just been reading this and then I am still, I, I think I'm like 40% done or yeah, I've read like 40% so far of The Winding Ways Quilt. You're kind of just getting like a lot of backstories so far and they're just like kind of reminiscing. So if you are someone who likes to read like a lot of dialogue, I will say that it's a lot of the characters like looking back. There's still dialogue, but it's like a lot of kind of flashbacks basically. And so, yeah, you know, it just depends on like what you're interested in. Um, again, I'm not like super, I'm not like super invested in the characters and actually because there's new characters that are coming in that were introduced in a previous book and we see them like a little bit I would like to hear more of their story but at the same time I understand like why or yeah I understand why it would be like you know smart to give us like more backstory about the main characters they are the main characters after all so I will say I think the flashbacks are really interesting. I think that um, the author, Jennifer Chivarini, really excels in writing about the past, whether it's like from a historical kind of, you know, context, like going all the way back to like the 1900s or 1800s, you know, whether it's something like that or it's just the character reflecting on their past. I feel like she does a really good job of that. So that's kind of where I am. Yeah, that's my little update. Um, also, I have just been really enjoying fall. Like, I have just, yeah, been loving it. The weather has been changing. It's, like, colder in the mornings. I don't know why the gloomy look, like, is a mood booster for me, but it is, and it's really nice. So, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying fall, too, and I'll come back, um when I get like further in this book or if I have any more um, thoughts on it. 
Hey guys, so I wanted to give a little update on the Winding Ways quilt. So, so far I've read 55% of the book and this particular chapter was about Gwen and I just found it really interesting. It basically kind of gave a backstory to how she got interested in quilting in the first place. And so you just get like more depth for the character and the atmosphere of like is atmosphere the right word? Well, that feeling of just like friendship and like strong bonds through friendship, that theme, that is all throughout the Elm Creek quilt series. It is like really coming through now. So in that that last chapter that I read, that's when things started like picking up a little bit more for me because that there's like, I, I can feel, I can see like somewhere over there, the light. Anyway, <laughs> it distracted me. Anyway, I can feel like how connected the friend group is and so it makes me more interested in the characters before i was saying how i don't really feel that connected or interested in any of the characters but i do think like their friendship is just really sweet so i like that and the backstory that they gave it was like a story within a story and i kind of wanted to it was kind of like i wanted to hear a little bit more because there was some type of like mystery involved as she was reflecting but the point of the backstory was just to tell us like why or how she became interested in quilting so it just kind of like cut off and so I felt a tug where I was like okay why are they like you know still telling us about this one incident when like we're not in that time period anymore if that makes sense and that's something that the author does a lot of she just like goes into like a backstory or a different like place in time and I think that she really excels in that kind of writing but I did feel a tug where I was like okay get on with it but then at the same time I was like actually interested in the story but towards the end of the chapter it all kind of came together and it really made sense why they were talking about this little mystery that she was trying to solve in the first place because it was connected with how she got involved in quilting so yeah that's my little update i think it's picking up so it's been you know pretty enjoyable it's just her books are like they are books that i feel like i can just go back to and just enjoy really leisurely so yeah if you're looking for something like that i think her series overall is pretty good So it is October 16th. I finished the Winding Ways quilt today. Um, I, I don't know. So I'll say this first. The ending, I was like sitting and listening to it and then it just like ended and I was like, oh wow, that's the ending? Like it wasn't, well, I guess I was just kind of thinking that there was going to be a little bit more. It's not that it ended badly or anything, though. I was just expecting more. Um, all of the backstories, for the most part, were good. I got to learn more about the characters. And there was a lot of just, like, friendship and kind of um, reconciliation. Like, it was sweet, but I don't know. There was something about the writing for one, I feel like the title was incorporated too much into the book where it was like just kind of, yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but it was a little bit too much. There was just something about the, the writing that wasn't quite it for me, and I really don't know how to explain it, but all the backstories were good. Some of them were kind of like, okay, I've heard most of this from the other books, and I like that you know it's kind of like the they're kind of showing how like some of the founders of this um quilt camp are leaving and new people are coming in but it also just kind of felt like a transition book which it's not bad to have those transition books um she has other kind of what i would consider transition books um, throughout the series and I don't feel this way about all of them but I don't know it was just 
I'm still, I'm still formulating my thoughts as I'm filming this. I kind of know what my rating is, but maybe it will change if I give it a few days. Because like I said, I just finished it today. So yeah, I have mixed feelings about the book to say the least. But yeah, I finished it. Um, I have also just been, I have a lot of chemistry assignments to do and so my brain can just only hold <laughs> so much information therefore it's been difficult for me to get through even better than Eden even though I am enjoying this book I am currently on chapter five so I did make it to chapter five I only got a few pages in but this chapter is the story of the bridegroom so it's really good it's just that after I have done you know all my assignments and stuff it, it's just hard to read which is why I'm able to go through the audiobooks a little bit faster but even with the audiobooks it's just a lot of information to take in so there's that but yeah I finished that and so I can move on to <clears throat> the next book on my TBR while I'm still reading even better than Eden. I think it will be Stewards of Eden that I read, even though I wanted to read this after even better than Eden, but I really, I honestly don't even know if I will finish these books by the end of the month, which was my goal, but either way, um, yeah. I will probably go through this one next because this is the book that even though I have it with me I'm going to listen to the audio version um, again it's about a biblical view on the environment so there's that hey guys so I think it's October 20th right now it's a Friday I have been recording stuff in my little reading journal and I didn't record this before but I did start reading Stewards of Eden. Um, I'm also, I'm not going to spend too long on this because I've been talking about it for majority of the video but I am still <laughs> in chapter 5 of Even Better Than Eden. It's still so good. I really, really do love the writing it's just yeah. yeah anyway enjoying it but let me tell you guys so stewards of eden if you've seen um some of my other videos i'm pretty sure i mentioned it in another video that i tried to read this before and i actually dnf'd it because the language was i i just felt like it was written for theology students and not for just the everyday person who wants to learn more about the um, environment and how to make choices that positively impact the environment. That's how I felt. So I actually recorded, oops, my little bookmark fell out. So I have been recording little notes on Stewards of Eden. So I said that this book is actually really interesting, even though it's written kind of like a textbook. And I also have found as I've been reading this that I'm able to relate some of these things to um, what I've been learning because I recently had to retake a biology class and then I'm taking a chemistry class right now. Reading this book now versus when I tried to before it just has a different feel. And I wrote that, so basically it's it's actually really good. And I wrote that I'll be surprised if this is a four star rating. And now I don't know, like I'm on chapter three, I think. Yeah, I'm on chapter three, so I'm not too far in. But I think it was chapter three, like the beginning of chapter three when I DNF this book last time. But I don't know, it's just, wow, like it's really actually impactful and I think listening to it on audio helps a lot. And also just going into this book and just like listening to it, even though I don't understand everything, just letting the, the narrator talk, 
I think that has helped too versus like just trying to understand every little thing. I'm basically just getting like a more kind of general understanding of it. And so yeah, it's really good. I actually really do appreciate the references to scriptures in the Old Testament about land use and how we should treat animals. It's like, it's just mind blowing because when I read the text, you know, I'm not really thinking about land use and agriculture and all of that. That's not really what I'm like reading the text for. So yeah, just the way that she even talks about like the Sabbath and how even the land was given a Sabbath. I mean, this book is actually really good. I will say I, <laughs> I was listening to it this morning and I'm like still kind of emotional from it because she was talking about how poorly animals are treated specifically in the U.S. and I just like want to cry <laughs> because it's just like so oh it's just so sad and it's it's really like frustrating that we treat you know the land this way and animals this way and yeah it's just really good because this book also talks about how like if you care about the poor, you know, for instance, and you care about these like human justice kind of situations, then it actually makes sense to care about the environment too. And I appreciate this because I go to a, you know, like public college, right? So even though I may learn about the environment, I don't learn from school how the biblical narrative and how the scriptures relate to our care for the environment, you know? Um, yeah, I will likely just come back if I finish either of these books. Probably more likely to finish this one by the end of October than um, even better than Eden because again, I'm listening to Stewards of Eden on audio, but yeah, I'll come back um, if I finish any of those books, and then if not, I'll just close the video and yeah. Hey guys, so it is October 31st, which means I will be ending the vlog here. Honestly, I just... I tried to film a couple of things, but then I ended up having to delete those videos. So there's not too much footage. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through where I'm at reading wise. First, I will follow up and say that I'm still reading even better than even. It's going slowly, but I, I've i enjoyed it so far. It's been really good. There's actually a couple of chapters that I want to kind of look at and like, read scriptures about it to see they were like challenging topics so yeah right now I am on chapter seven so I am right here in the book so far but yeah really good okay since I talk about that one so much I'm moving on pretty quickly but I finished stewards of even yeah I finished it, I listened to it, and it was so good. I'm really glad that I gave it a second chance because this is a book that I DNF'd previously and I just thought, you know, the language was not for the everyday person so it made it kind of hard to, like, understand. But as I just continued listening to it, it was so good. It was also just very convicting, like, man, this book really really was good i don't i don't even know what else to say i will god willing talk about it um more in another video but this book again is about um how christians are responsible for caring for the earth and how to make kind of like better environmental choices but most of all like why that is actually a biblical thing to do it's been interesting reading these these two books like kind of at the same time because I think that they both have like a little bit of a different take or come from kind of a different perspective as far as like how the Garden of Eden relates to us as Christians today 
but I think I actually really like this author. What's her name? <clears throat> Sandra L. Richer. I think I actually really like this author and would like to read more books by her, so that was like very surprising. What I also really love is that at the end of this book, it gives practical applications of how you can start caring um, for the earth like in small ways and so I just loved that like yeah so really really good um now let's talk about the yellow bird sings so I actually DNF this book within the first chapter it is not because it's like I mean I don't know if I would even like call books bad per se but it's not so much that I thought that it was a bad book, but it is kind of, the nature of it, right, is that there's this mom and she has this daughter and they are hiding because this is, you know, during the time of like Hitler where he's like sending all these Jewish people to concentration camps, basically trying to kill all the Jewish people. So she is in hiding right now and it's like, it's just, it's intense and it's sad which is fine but basically in this first chapter I feel like it was about to get into like she's basically about to sell herself just to like have a place to stay so that she doesn't have to go to this concentration camp and I was just like I know that those things happen but it's not really something that I want to read about and yeah when I listened to Flowers for Algernon like it impacted me kind of negatively and I just like kept reading it and it took a while for that like feeling to go away so when I started kind of feeling like mm, like this isn't really something that I want to like hear right now even though I know that it, it happens it's not something that I want to read about I just went ahead and DNF'd it because you know I'm reading books for like enjoyment right and I don't want to put myself through that so yeah I went ahead and DNF'd it and so I replaced it with another book Cherish the one that I really did um, want to read but my mom didn't pick it so yeah Cherish by Kim Cash Tay I am reading this I have been reading this before and then I kind of put it down because I was following the TBR prompt so right now I'm on chapter 13 and yeah I mean I was able to like pick back up where I left off because I still remembered what happened there is like I don't know it's it's very realistic it's very mature but it is a Christian fiction book so it's constantly pointing back to God and I'm like yeah I think that's what I want right now like that's what I kind of want to feed myself so to speak when I'm just reading for entertainment if that makes sense I feel like I'm going on a tangent I'm just trying to tell you guys everything <laughs> that I didn't record but um the interesting thing about this book so far is that I kind of like when I started reading it again I was like oh you know like it's it's fine it's a book like I don't really have any thoughts about it but then I'm like but I do want to finish like this whole thing so I don't know I don't know how I feel about it yet but you guys will um, hear about it in another video so that is all of my updates thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed and found it um, entertaining and I'll see you in the next one